If you want to talk about the big challenges facing the world, you must talk about malaria, a disease that impacts the lives of over 200 million people today. For years, it's been a primary focus of organizations like the Global Fund and the Gates Foundation. They know and we know that we can't progress the human condition when we're living with a disease that killed 209,000 people in 2019 alone. Sadly, China was one country that was no stranger to malaria caused by a single-cell parasite and carried by mosquitoes. The low point was in the 1940s when 30 million Chinese were getting infected each year of that decade. It was an enormous problem at a time when up and down the country, communities were already struggling with chaos and conflict. Thus, malaria in China was no temporary visitor, but a problem that was truly endemic. In June 2021, the World Health Organization certified China malaria-free, a huge turnaround from the past and the first country in the region to achieve this status since the 1980s when Australia, Singapore and Brunei eliminated the disease. Progress has been a step-by-step process. In the 1950s, health authorities in China began providing medicines to prevent further spread while treating those who were already sick. That way, they were able to track and slow the disease. In the 1960s, they gathered 500 of their best scientists to find new treatments. This elite group was called Project 523 and was headed by Tu Youyou, a young pharmaceutical chemist from Ningbo. In the 1970s, the efforts of these women and men led to the discovery of artemisinin, the heart of ACT, one of the most effective anti-malarial drugs used in the world today. Then came the 1980s, when China innovated the use of mosquito nets, long before WHO made this a global standard for malaria control. In 1990, the accumulation of decades of persistence caused the numbers to drop off, Compared to the 1940s, when there were 30 million cases annually in China, there were just 117,000 cases. That number is now zero. Along the way, there have been bold experiments. One story we covered on the China Current was of the scientists at Sun Yat-sen University who flooded two islands in Guangdong province with millions of mosquitoes, then cleared them out. It provided them with new understanding, not only on malaria, but also dengue and Zika. There's a living hero in all of this. Remember Tu Youyou, the head of Project 523? Well, she's 90 years old today and the first Chinese woman to win a Nobel Prize after studying herbal medicines and extracting artemisinin. The compound has changed the face of tropical disease therapies and her work has saved the lives of millions of people, not only in China, but across Asia, Africa and Latin America. She has shown the benefits of traditional Chinese medicine and uniquely how it can be combined with Western approaches despite never having studied or researched abroad. Yes, countries like China can provide solutions, but like malaria, many of our problems are shared. They have the best chance of being solved when we look to science and when we collaborate with an open, global mindset. I am James Chow, you're watching The China Current. Follow us on social media at The China Current.